anything in the world, but yet if somebody was to ask for your phone number, you faint. <laughs> then there's a possibility that you have a fear of relationship, mm -hmm. a connection. Mm -hmm. So that might be why it looks like the relationship hasn't shown up. The relationship hasn't shown up because you are afraid of it. Mm -hmm. And you don't want it to show up while you are afraid of it. Because if it shows up while you are afraid of it, you're going to choose someone that you're going to have conflict with. Yeah. So the people that you're in relationships with, that you always mm -hmm. have conflict with, that you got in a relationship with, those are relationships that were formed out of fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. So does that mean you get rid of the person? No, that would be too easy. You have too much guilt. So <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I couldn't possibly end it. Oh, yeah. You know, no, no. <laughs> Thing had to do is recognize misery and go the other way. Uh -huh. You don't know the meaning of commitment. What about commitment? Uh -huh. What about being committed? You know, and it's like uh -huh. be committed Shit. to your truth uh -huh. and yourself and your love and your peace and your connection to source. Mm -hmm. And then out of that connection, form connections that you call intimate relationships. Man, so. <laughs> So asking for what you really want would be asking for something that you wouldn't feel afraid to ask for. Start with asking for the stuff that you're not afraid to ask for, whatever that might be for you. If you know you're afraid when you're doing it, you know you're telling the universe, I'm asking for this, but the truth is I'm really afraid to receive it. I'm asking for this, but I really don't want it. How do I know? Because I'm afraid, I'm uncomfortable while I'm asking. But no, then somebody will say, well, that means I wouldn't ask for anything. That might be a good route for you to go. <laughs> Stop. Because you're just asking for things that when you receive them, you're never satisfied. Would, if you, would fear be if you didn't think you deserved it, too? That still would be fear. Okay. Yeah. And if you don't think you deserve it, even if it showed up, you'd sabotage it because you don't think you deserve it. So the guy or woman that shows up that would be the best connection you could have. I like to use relationships because I like to use stuff that we get emotionally involved with. I could use lawn more, but I don't think it has the same juice. <laughs> okay, so I use stuff that we, you know, because the, the number one thing that everyone's looking for is some form of relationship. Mm -hmm. True. That's, that, that's what everybody wants. The Course in Miracles teaches that there's one belief that underlies every single thing that you see going on in the world, no matter how different it seems, no matter how, where you see it at, no matter what race they are, no matter where they are on earth. If the Course says there's one among separate beings, there's one underlying desire that supersedes everything and always wins. And it says that desire is the desire for specialness. That our desire for specialness is behind every freaking thing we do, whether I'm the, I'm the most special one because I'm the best salesman this month, or um, I, I'm special because you, I'm the only one you love over anybody else, or I'm special because nothing goes right for me more than anybody else. But this specialness can go from being the, more pathetic than anybody else to being the, the greatest. He said, what underlies, if, if you want to know what's behind everybody you see walking down the street, they want to be special. They want to be noticed. They want to be unique. They want to be treated. Some, even, if they're, even if it's them saying they don't want any of those things, mm -hmm. that's still another way yeah. to be different from everybody else. Way to be special. It still makes you special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because I'm so different from how everybody mm -hmm. else is. Mm -hmm. so, so it says the once you understand that, then you understand that there's only one way you can be special, and if that means something's got to be greater or lesser than you. Somebody's got to be greater or lesser than mm -hmm. you. There's got to be someone lesser than. So the whole desire creates an automatic need to judge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so we are asking from the part of us that wants to connect and wants to use our unique specialness for the unity of all of us. So now we can still have what appears to be our specialness, but now we're using it to bring us into an awareness of our unity with each other. So I'm doing it in my own unique way. No one's gonna do this teaching in the form that I'm doing it through me. I don't have any competition. There is nobody else that's exactly like me in form. So I don't have any competition. So I can enjoy what I do. And I can, so, so the, the truth is you don't have any competition when you're being true to yourself. You don't have any competition when you're being true to yourself because there's no one else exactly like you in form, in personality, and in uniqueness. 
So how can I tell when I'm completely out of touch with myself and my own uniqueness? My life is boring. I am bored. I don't feel thrilled in my experience. That means you're living somebody else's life and you need to stop. You live in the life of the commercials on TV. You live in the life of the magazines that tell you what you should look like and what you should be about. You are not living your life. You live in your mothers, your fathers, your sisters, your brothers, your teachers, your ministers, how they told you you're supposed to live. When you start living the way you're supposed to live, then you won't have any fear and you will have power, you will have joy, and you will feel gratitude, and you'll be so glad every day to wake up that you don't even know how to express the level of joy. Yeah. Yeah. Why am I saying it? Because, because we need to recognize that happiness and joy is truly possible for us, but it is not possible for us by following somebody else's plan. Right. Yeah. It's not possible by following somebody else's map. But it takes courage to stand up for who you really are and mm -hmm. express yourself into a culture. And most people just frankly don't have any courage. The herd in instinct rules. They just want to be like everybody else. Mm -hmm. They're afraid to stand up for who they are. So if you are, when you receive an answer that tells you you can be yourself and you can express yourself and you're a unique self, you won't respond to that. You won't act on that. And that's what it's telling us. Out of the deepest, darkest chaos of your mind, woo, I love that. Wow. I'll say it again. Out of the deepest, darkest chaos of your mind comes the possibility of light. So if right now you're going through deep, dark chaos, I mean, the deepest, darkest chaos that you think you've ever experienced, you are closer to the possibility of light. You're very close to the possibility of the truth. You know why? Because it's usually when a person has reached their limit that they finally do anything about whatever they're being told. And usually if you give a person an inch, then they're going to wait an inch. Yeah. But the person whose back is against the wall, mm -hmm. they're the ones who come out fighting. As long as there's a couple of feet behind me, I'm going to still keep backing up. Mm -hmm. so, so your tolerance mm -hmm. is equal to how much you back up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's deep, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's I really like deep. That. So it says, it's a bit like traveling backwards or the review of life that some experience after death. Like there's a story that I've heard in many metaphysical psychic circles that when you die you, and you go outside of your body, you, you see a review of your entire life. Mm -hmm. Are there some things you've done that you'd rather not <laughs> have with you? <laughs> Think about that. Are there some things that you've done that the idea of reviewing that would not feel too good? Yeah. <laughs> he says, in order to remember unity, you must, in a sense, travel back to unity, undoing as you go all you have learned since last you knew it. So all that remains is love. Now, that one sentence described the whole journey, and I'm just going to say it again until we hear it, because it just described the whole journey. Okay. Okay, you're saying you want to remember oneness. Do, are you saying that you yeah. want to remember your joy, your peace, your happiness, your oneness? Yeah. yeah. Okay, then, it, then the next thing that it tells us is then, in a sense, it's going to look like you're traveling backwards. What does that mean? It looks like you're going to be undoing your old way of thinking, right? You're undoing everything you've learned since you really knew yourself and really knew what your happiness is. So you're going backwards. You are undoing everything you've learned to get back to what you know. So everything that we've learned, we're learning how to undo it, to not look at it that way anymore. As we travel back to the part of us that actually knows it is love, it knows it does deserve love. Yeah. That's so I'm undoing what I learned. I'm, I'm, in other words, I'm undoing all the things I've learned from the world based on fear and separation. That's why it feels scary, maybe. Yeah, it, it feels scary because the self, the, the separated self that you built up based on these teachings, based on these learnings, based on these fears, mm -hmm. that part of you that believes in everything that the world taught, it naturally is going to feel afraid and like it's being undone and being destroyed. In other words, your old self, your old self built up on your fears and insecurities and all that kind of stuff. That old self is terrified at what you're hearing tonight. 
It's terrified of love. It's terrified mm -hmm. of the truth. It doesn't know how to respond mm -hmm. with unconditional love. It doesn't know, the, the separated self sitting in the chair doesn't know how to trust unconditionally. It doesn't know that it has a connection with God that's taking care of it all the time. The self that's sitting in the chair basically thinks it's on its own trying to make it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you say stuff like unconditional love and forgiveness and freedom, it's like the part of the separated self is going, it's not jumping for joy. It's like, I don't, I know how to project, blame, condemn, and hold a grievance to the day I die. I don't know how to love everybody regardless. Mm -hmm. so, so, so it looks like we are being presented with an impossible learning task, and what could be more depressing than a curriculum you can't do? <laughs> that, and that's why, you, yeah. that's why we get depressed, because it looks like everything the book is telling me to do, I can't do it. Why would that's what I be but depressed? Mm -hmm. Unconditional love, freedom, unconditional freedom, I don't know how to do that. So the more I read this, the more I get depressed. Mm -hmm. Because it sounds like it's asking me to do something I can't do. Makes sense. So that's why the fear comes up. The fear comes up because you really are finally responding. You're finally actually doing something to get rid of your pain. And the part of you that loves pain, the part of you that loves pain, the part of you that loves loss, the part of you that loves abandonment, is like totally upset with you right now for even daring thinking you didn't have to keep putting yourself through the same old stuff that you've been putting yourself through for years. That part of you is bad. It is pissed. It is upset with you for daring to love yourself. <laughs> daring to say, yeah. I've had enough, I'm and good. I deserve more love <laughs> and more peace than I've been giving myself. I've had enough. I've reached my limit. So when, you, so when I start talking like this, it's going to make you want to go to sleep. It's going to make mm -hmm. you want to go unconscious. The part of you that hates your friggin' guts doesn't want you to hear what I'm saying. That's why you have to actually get in control of your own ego so that you can transcend it. You have to go, I'm yawning, but I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got resistance, but I'm going to keep on reading. Mm -hmm. I get mad at what you're saying, but I'm going to keep on giving the truth to myself. You got you to consciously grab your little ego by the butt mm -hmm. and say, sit your butt down, and I'm going <laughs> to move toward my happiness. I don't care how much you scream and holler telling me that I'm guilty, bad, unworthy, nothing goes right for me, that I don't need to trust what he's saying. That, that voice that's talking to you right now, that's the same voice that's always kept you from having the kind of life you've been wanting to have. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that yet? <laughs> no, I don't. I need to be reminded of it yes. all the freaking time. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm here for. That's what I do. That's what you do. Because that's what I need. Mm -hmm. That's what I need. Yeah. So then it goes on.